Hi guys, welcome to High School Maths UK. Today we're going to look at a 2019 National 5 Maths exam and we'll focus on paper 2. So I'm going to start off with a percentage question. It's a little compound interest. So we've got 80,000 being distributed, um, 80,000 packs being distributed in 2018 and it's increasing by 15% per year. So we start off with an initial value of 100%, increased by 15% per year. That means at the end of each year we're going to be 115% compared to what we were 100% at the beginning. It's over a period of three years, so we're going to convert that to decimal for a calculator um, and then qubit so that to take into account the, the three years increase. So it's 1.15 times 1.15 times 1.15 for each year, times it by the 80,000 initial, and we get 1.15 to the power of three times 80,000. That gives us 121670. Nice easy question to start off with. There was no asking to round or anything, um, so no significant figures. So that's us finished. That's the three marks. Question two, we're looking for the magnitudes of this vector. We're given the component form, so it's the square root of six squared plus 27 squared plus negative 18 squared. And if we take that into a calculator, that gives us the square root of 1089, which should be 33. And that's the magnitude of our vector P. Question three, we're looking for the area of the triangle. You can see it's a little bit of trigonometry. We've got a non-right angle triangle, angle of 129 degrees given, and all the information is in the diagram. We take the formula from the formula sheet. So it's a half AB sine C. The sine C, the C is the, the kind of key part. That's the part that needs to be at the angle we're given. So C here um, needs to go at the angle. We're looking for really two sides and an angle in between with this formula. So if that's capital C, that's a small c, uh, A and B are interchangeable. So that's A, small a, B, small b. We could have them the other way around. Plug the numbers in half times A times B. So 45 times 70 or 70 times 45. Doesn't really matter. Times sine of 1, 2, 9. Type that into the calculator. So it's sine 1, 2, 9. And that gives us 1, 2, 2, 4, 0 0.005 for into three uh, decimal places, square centimetres. Okay, um, just make sure your calculator is on degrees for that, uh, rather than any of the other modes the calculator works in. Okay, uh, question four. So we're looking to find, we've got poppy, uh, sorry, sesame seed weighs 3.6 times 10 to the negative 6, which is scientific notation question. Uh, the weight of a poppy seed is 8% of the weight of the sesame seed. Calculate the weight of a poppy seed. So we're just looking for 8% of the sesame seed. So 8.8% of 3.6 times 10 to the power negative 6. Um, so 8 over 100. Or actually we'll do it as a decimal. So we'll go for 0 0.08. Do, 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 do. 0 0.08 times 3.6 times 10 to the negative 6. As a scientific notation, so 0 0.08 times 3.6 times 10 to the power negative 6. That should give you 0, uh, 0 0.00. 0, 0. Zero, 0, 2, 8, 8. It does want an answer in scientific notation, so we're going to do 2.88 times 10 to the power. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so negative 7, and it's kilograms. Okay, so the original question was in kilograms, um, the original units was in the kilograms, so we've got our answer in kilograms already. Okay, um, question 5, diagram shows a cone with a diameter of six units and a height of eight units. So we've got a 3D diagram of a cone there. It says the X and uh, Y axis are tangents to the base. Okay, so they just touch at the one point and don't cut through. A is the point of contact between the base and the X axis. B is directly above the center of the base. So B is kind of the tip of the cone. Write down the coordinates of A and B. Okay, so let's have a look at this. It's, uh, so it's good to do a cone, it's diameter of six, the height of eight. So from here to here, this kind of value is six, if we got that back. 
and the vertical distance back on the y-axis here would be 6, 2. Um, what we're looking for for A is the coordinate. So we're going how far along? So it's 3 along. The x-axis, 0 back, and the y-axis and 0 up, and the height, and the z-axis. Uh, for coordinate B, we're going the same. It's kind of in the middle, so it's 3 along still to get there. But we've got to go 3 back as well. And then this time we've got to go all the full height of the cone. The height of the cone was 8, so 3, 3, 8. Okay, so that's your two marks there. Uh, question 6, solve the equation. So we've got a quadratic equation. Tell us to give that the correct one decimal place. That implies that we're going to use the quadratic formula from the formula sheet. So we're going to take our A, B and C values, 3, 9 and negative 2. And use the formula. So it's negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. And that gives us negative 9 plus or minus the square root of uh, 3 squared, no, sorry, 9 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 2 all over 2 times 3. And we're just simplifying the part inside the square root here. So 9 squared is 81. So 81 minus 4 times 3 times negative 2 gives 105 all over 6. Now that we've simplified, we can split it up. That's where the plus or minus part comes in. So 105 plus one, root 105 over 6 or x equals negative 9 minus root 105 over 6. And that should give us two solutions. So we'll start with the left hand first and we've got negative 9 plus root 105 divided by 6. That gives us 0 0.2 Zero seven or zero point zero uh, zero point two zero eight. Um, if we round to three decimal places there, and we'll go for a negative one. So we've got negative nine minus root one o five divided by six. That's negative three point two zero eight. If we round to three there. Now the question was asking us to round to one, so we want to go to zero point two for this answer and negative 3.2 for this answer. Okay, uh, so question seven, let's have a look at question seven. Uh, triangle, so we've got x, y, z, three, all three sides given, we want to size the smallest angle. The smallest angle is going to be opposite this, uh, the smallest side, so we're looking for this one, I'll just call this uh, A here, we're using always the x, y, and z, so I'll call this A degrees. And we have all three sides, so again, using the formula book, we're looking at cos of A equals B squared plus C squared minus A squared all over 2BC. Okay, so we're looking for angle A, so I'm going to call this angle corner A, which means this is small A, and B and C again are kind of interchangeable here, so put a B there, a B here, C there, and C there. The, only, the one that really matters is the cos A because that's the angle we've got to be looking for, so A has got to be an angle we want to find. So... Uh, cos A equals, and we're just substituting all the values, so 7.2 squared plus 6.3 squared minus 8.5 squared all over 2 times 7.2 times 6.3. And cos A equals, so this should be quite a small answer because we're going to then move on to do inverse cos. So it's 7.2 squared plus 6.3 squared minus 8.5 squared. And we're dividing that by 2 times 7.2 times 6.3. That gives us 0 0.213. If we round to three decimal places. Keep the answer on your calculator and use the second function of shift, uh, inverse cos. So that will give us, and then use your answer button, 77.73. Degrees. Again, that's rounded to two decimal places. Um, we're not asked to round anything specific in here, just keep it to two decimal places to keep it nice and accurate, but one would probably be fine here as well. Um, okay, good. Next question. So question eight looks like a volume question. Uh, it's telling us all the information from the question in the diagram. So let's have a look at what it's asking. Calculate the volume of the bollard. Give your answer to three significant figures. That's something we want to highlight just now. Um, okay, so we've got two shapes. We've got the 
uh, cylinder and the hemisphere. So we'll start with the hemisphere since that's at the top. Um, and that would be four thirds pi r cubed. Now it's up to you which way you want to do this, but you're going to have to half it at some stage. The this formula is for the full, full cube, full full cube. This formula is for the full he, uh, full sphere. So if we want hemisphere, we're going to have to incorporate a divide by two at some point. So it's four thirds times pi times the radius of the, the the sphere. So that would be twelve from the middle to the outside using the twenty four at the base. So twelve cubed. I'm going to put a divide by two at the end there for the hemisphere, and then just type that. In. So four divided by three times um, pi times 12 cubed, and then divided by 2, that gives us 3619.115. Okay, we're going to do the volume of the cylinder, and that's going to be pi r squared h. That's pi times the radius, so pi times, again, the radius here is 12 squared times the height. Now the height of the, this is something you have to be really careful with here. And um, a lot of people would use 70. It's not quite 70 for the actual cylinder. And um, the height of the cylinder, this part here for the for the hemisphere, because the radius of the hemisphere is 12, um, we've got to take off 12 from our total height. So it's actually gonna be 58 for the height of the cylinder. So it's pi times 12 squared times uh, 58 and that gives us 26238.582 cm cubed and the total is just going to be the sum of these so adding these two together so I'm going to take that answer add 3619.115 onto my answer that gives me 29857.2 0.696697 cm cubed. Rounding that to three significant figures, which is what we were asking the questions. Don't forget that part. We've got one, two, three significant figures, and it's got it's a five afterwards, so it's going to round up. So it's going to be 29900 cm cubed. Okay. Um, okay, moving on. Question nine. Georgia had a roof repaired. She was charged an extra 2.5% for late payment. She had to pay. £977.85, how much she would have saved if she paid on time. Okay, so she she was originally billed for the full payments, which was 100%, but then there was an extra surcharge of 2.5%. Um, so she actually paid, ended up paying 102.5%. What we've got to do is figure out how much the original 100% payment was, because what we're saying is the 102.5% 2 payment was actually equal to uh, £977.85. So we're going to work it down to 1% and then back to 100%. Um, so the process for that is going to be dividing by 100. Uh, so dividing by 102.5. So if we do 977.85 divided by 102.5. Sounds like a radio station. Uh, 977.85 divided by, I'll take away, do, 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 divided by 102.5. That gives us 9.54. And then we're going to times that by 100. So that's going to give us 954 pounds. Okay, so one of your classic working backwards questions, there's different, loads of different ways to set out that working there. Um, you don't have to go through this whole process. This just helps kind of visualize what you're actually doing at each step. So if you just divide by 102.5, then times by 100 to get back to 100%, that's the kind of key thing. Um, and again, there's alternative methods for that too. Okay, question 10, express in completed square form. Uh, so we've got x squared plus 10x minus 15, and that is equal to, so we want a bracket squared. So we take the x squared and take that down to an x because we're going to square out this bracket. Uh, we have the coefficient of the x term, and that gives it x plus 5 squared. Now, 5 squared is 25, so we're going to take that away because that's going to give us an extra term that we don't want yet, and we're going to carry the minus 15 from the original expression down. Once we've done that, we've then got uh, x plus 5 squared. We're going to leave that as is, but we're going to uh, click like terms for these two uh, number terms at the end. That's going to give us minus 40 for a completed square form. Okay, uh, question 11. Another triangle. Looks like we've got another bit of trigonometry maybe here. It could be right angled um, at this part. Let's see. 
Uh, diagram shows the course of a jet ski race. The course is indicated by markers A, B, and C. Total length is 1,500 meters. Determine whether it's due east. Okay, so it looks like a uh, Pythagoras, converse Pythagoras question. Determine whether B is due east of A. Okay, so we're looking to see if this is east of this. Um, do, 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 do. Okay. So C is due north of B, so that's the north line. Okay, so if that's due east, then this should be a right angle triangle. That's what it's looking to show that that's a right angle triangle. Okay, so let's start off a little bit of converse of Pythagoras. We're going to have to figure out this missing side. It said the total length of the course is 1,500. So we're going to do 1,500, um, take away 650, take away 600. That gives us 250. So it's saying that the last part of this course must be 250 meters. Now, Pythagoras, the whole um, theory behind Pythagoras is that the two short sides of a right angle triangle, when you square the sums, it, that's equal to the sum of the, sorry, that's equal to the square of the longer side. So if we say, we call this A and B as a short side, and we call this C for a longer side. So we say A squared plus B squared, that's 600 squared, so that will start at 250 squared. So if I say that's 250 squared plus 600 squared, that equals, let me get this for that, 422,500, that's not 500, that's 5,000, so 422, oh, you, 500, and then we do C squared, 650 squared, that gives us 422,500, so same answer, oops, I write down the working, so 650 squared, equals 422500. So we've got the same answer, the same values for a squared plus b squared and the same total for c squared. So we can then have our final statements. We can say, uh, determine whether b is due east of a. So b is due east of a since by converse of Pythagoras, A squared plus B squared equals C squared and A B triangle A B C is right angled at B. Okay, so just a statement along those lines, tie it in with the context of the question, what it was asking you to do. We have stated that B is due east of A. We've used the converse of Pythagoras, showing that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We've, we've identified a squared and b squared as specific values in our working, and it is right angled. At, we've determined that it is a right angled triangle at b, which means b is due east of a. Okay, good. Uh, part c. So for part c, we're looking at, it looks like an arc. Oh, no, it's got similar shapes, but mathematically similar. Says the area of the large sector ABC is 2750, so that's the large one. So this is 2750 squared centimeters. Calculate the area of the smaller sector BEF. Okay, so it's a, we'll start off with the length scale factor. So the length scale factor is a reduction, so it's 30 over 50. We'll take that down to 3 over 5, but we're using a calculator, so 0 0.6 will be fine. Uh, the area scale factor will be 0 0.6 squared. And if we're looking for the area of the larger one, it's going to be 0 0.6 squared. Sorry, the area of the small one times 2750cm squared. Okay, so let's type that in. 2750, and that gives us 990. Okay, so the area of the smaller one is 990cm squared. We then go on to say calculate the size of angle ACB. Okay, so ACB is this angle here. It's given us a sector area, and now it's tying into that whole sector area um, work type working. So we're going for the sector area formula. So sector area is angle over 360 times pi r squared. Now we want to substitute in everything we know. We know the area is 2750. 
So we're going to have to complete the left hand side. The angle was, we don't know because that's what we were asked to find, uh, x over 360 times pi times the radius squared. The radius of that was 50, so 50 squared. And then we just carry out this calculation. So we're going to have to do a little bit of rearranging. The format for this rearranging always works out the same way, um, providing you're looking for the missing angle. So we're going to multiply both sides by 360, and then we're going to divide by the pi times 50 squared. And that leaves the x on its own. Once we've got that, we can just take that into the calculator. So on the top line, we've got 2750 times 360. Uh, on the bottom line, we've got pi times 50 squared. That gives you 126.05 degrees. That's rounded into two decimal places. It should be plenty. Okay, uh, let's look at the next question. So question 13, find an expression for the gradient squared. Two points, 6, 9, and 4p and 4p squared. There's still two coordinates, but the fact that they have p's in them doesn't change anything. So we'll call it x1, y1, x2, y2, and we're doing that because we're going to, we're asked to find an expression for gradient, and we know the gradient formula is this. There we go. So I'm going to take those values and substitute them in. So top line, 4p squared for the y2, minus uh, do, 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 9. And for the bottom line, we've got 4p, minus six. Okay, so what, for the three marks here, that's not three marks are working. Um, so we've got to try and simplify this. And that's why it says give your answer in its simplest form here. Um, if you look at the top line, it's an algebraic fraction. We're looking to see if we can simplify it. And we can, the top line can be factorized as a difference of two squares. There's no, com there's no common factor there though. So it's two P and two P to give us the four P squared, three and three, three threes give us nine at the end, one plus and one minus for your completed square form. Uh, sorry, com your, your difference of two squares. Um, and then the bottom line, if you actually look, we've got a common factor. They're both in the two times table, so that gives us two back at 2p minus 3. And what you're looking for there is something that will cancel out. Um, so we end up with 2p plus 3 all over 2. I'm not sure about our final answer. Okay, uh, then on to question 14, we've got a trig equation. So varieties of different ways to deal with this. And the first thing you do want to do, though, every time is rearrange it so that you've got the cos x term or the trig term. And um, in general, on its own. So we want to take away two from both sides and then divide by five. Okay, so I use the four quadrant diagram. So you've got your four quadrants. Um, let's split it up quickly. Uh, hopefully neater than that. And we've got um, each one represents a 90 degree rotation on the Di on your unit circle diagram. So we get 0 to 90, 90 to 180, 180 to 270, 270 to 360. We have at this stage cos being a negative value. So if cos is a negative value, we slip sine and tan. That's where our two values are, our two final answers are going to fall in the, within these regions. Um, I uh, we want to find something, um, an acute angle that's related to this uh, solution here. So we're going to find the related angle which is going to be inverse cos, so cos to the minus one of a fifth. Notice that we've changed it from negative a fifth to a fifth. We just want to use the absolute value here. So type that into a calculator, inverse cos of a fifth, and that gives you 78.5 degrees, we'll say, 78.5 for our related angle. We're then going to use this, so um, we've got 0, 180, 360 at the end, uh, the different regions, the ones we're looking at in particular are 180 minus, and this one's 180 plus. So for our value for x, we're going to use these two ticked, um, checked regions, and our values are going to be 180 minus the related angle and 180 plus the related angle. So 180 minus 78.5 and 180 plus 78.5. Normally, I wouldn't write that calculation down, not in a special like calculator paper. We just type them, but just for so you guys can see what we're doing. So 180 minus 78.5, 101.5, and 180 plus would be 258.5. Okay, so that's our two 
values for x, and that's the trig equation solved. We're checking that the values do fall within the region. We're last for x being between 0 and 360, or x values are between 0 and 360, so that's just finished. Okay, uh, question 15, algebraic fractions. So we've got 4 over x minus 2 minus 3 over x plus 5. And as always, with uh, adding and subtracting fractions, we need a common denominator. So um, let's see, our common denominator is going to be x minus 2, x plus 5. Multiplying the two denominators together is the easiest way. And for the first fraction, we multiply the bottom by x plus 5, so we multiply the top by x plus 5. And what should happen there is we cover up the x plus 5s then you should be left with what, what you had originally, so 4 over x minus 2. The x plus 5s would just cancel it if you need them to, although we want to leave them here, obviously. So there we have our common on there. Same idea here. Uh, we've got the x minus 2 multiplying this fraction, so we're going to have 3 bracket x minus 2. If we cancel out the x minus 2s, we would be left with 3 over x plus 5, which is equivalent to the line above, but we've now got a common on there. So we can bring these two fractions together as a single fraction. We're not doing any multiplying out at this stage, we're just putting the two fractions together to get them as a single fraction, and then we can multiply out. So we've got 4x plus 20 minus 3x plus the 6. Negative 3 times negative 2, quite a common mistake, so watch out for that. Uh, over x minus 2, bracket x plus 5. And then if we scroll down, we're going to get just a little bit of simplifying. 4x take away 3x on the numerator, it's x. 20 plus 6 is 26. Over x minus 2, bracket x plus 5. And that's our final solution. Don't be tempted to multiply the brackets in the bottom line. The factorized form would be simpli uh, considered simplified form, so we'll leave it like that. Okay, a uh, little bit of uh, indices work here. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to change that a on the bottom, the square root of a, to a to the power of half. So remember, square root was always power of half. We're then going to multiply top to together. When we're multiplying, this is we add the power. So we've got a to 3a to the power of 1, so we're going to end up with 3a to the power of 5 there on the top line over a to the power of half. Uh, the 3, uh, is, there's nothing we can simplify, there's no number term on the bottom, so we've just got the a to the power. Now this is where you have to be careful. Um, when you're dividing indices you subtract the power, so 5 divided by a half, 5 subtract, take, five take away a half would be four and a half. And that's the way quite a lot of people would write it, maybe 4.5 or four and a half. It's really up to you. You cannot leave your answer like that. Well, that's, that wouldn't be considered simplified um, to have a, a mixed number or a decimal in your power. So the, there's different ways you can write it. So that's equal to three a to the power four and a half, if you think of it as a mixed number, or four times two is eight, add on to the top is nine, so three a to the power nine over two. It's a really important skill for when you move on to higher to be able to express something as a fractional power. So it's something you want to practice and um, we do want it as top heavy rather than a mixed fraction. Okay, good. Uh, 17, expand and simplify. Okay, so this is quite a tricky question. Um, I think it's probably the last question in the paper. No, it's not. Okay, so it's your trig uh, identities coming into play here. So let's multiply this out and see where it takes us. So we get sine x plus cos x, all squared. Now what that means is sine x plus cos, I forgot the x, I'll lose my x there. Um, sine x plus cos x times sine x plus cos x. Okay, so we're just multiplying it out like a normal bracket. So sine x times sine x is sine squared x. Sine x times cos x is plus sine x cos x. Underneath, Cos x times sine x is another sine x, cos x. You can write it cos x, sine x if you want. Um, and cos x times cos x is cos squared x. Okay, now there's a few things to look out for here. So um, the key thing we want to do is put the squared terms together. Normally we put squared term first. So sine squared x plus cos squared x. We're bringing that cos squared x from the end to the beginning. These are like terms. We've got sine x, cos x, and sine x, cos x. So we've got two sine x cos x. If we look at that, that then leads on to when you trig identity, sine squared x plus cos squared x is actually just equal to 1. So that whole thing there just becomes 1 plus 2 sine x cos x. And if you actually move on to higher, you can simplify that a little bit further. Okay, uh, let's see what we've we got here. A snowman. 
Okay, so the diagram represents a snowman. Let's skip to the important part. Uh, so we've got two circles. Head is a small circle, diameter 15. Okay, so from here to here is 15 centimeters. The body is a larger circle. Yep, you can see that. Point T lies on the circumference of the small circle. Okay, so point T looks like the center point of the circle. Yep, center point of the larger circle. Point A and B lie on the circumference of both circles. Okay, calculate CD, the height of the snowman. All right. Okay, how are we going to do this? It looks like one of those Pythagoras type questions, doesn't it? Um, hmm, where are we going to go? So we've got 15. Did we get any elastic dimensions? We did not, so we're going to have to go with that 15. Do, 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 do. Hmm, so 15 there. How, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? Hmm. So we could, we want to make a right angle triangle. We definitely want to make a right angle triangle, um, but where are we going to make this right angle triangle? Now it looks to me, this is 7.5. This was 7.5 by 7.5. We could make a right angle triangle here, but that would, that would help us. Okay, so let's make a right angle triangle here. Now, there's a little bit of trying there sometimes with these questions, but if this diameter is 15, that's 7.5, and that's 7.5 as well, because they're both the radius of the smaller circle. Um, we'll call this our x, and we've got a bit of Pythagoras, so it's this lot, the hypotenuse, because the right angle is here. So x squared equals 7.5 squared plus 7.5 squared. x squared equals, so if we table into a calculator, it gives us 112.5. And we square root that. That's 10.6 to one decimal place. Centimeters. Okay, so we're saying this line here is 10.6. Now the key thing really is that when we look at this line from here to here, if we focus on just the larger circle, then that line is actually the radius of the larger circle. So from here to here, 10.6, which means from here to here is also 10.6. Now, that's a part of the height of the snowman. The other part is this line from here to here. Now, that line that I've just drawn in is 15 because that's the diameter of the smaller circle. So actually, if we add the 15 plus the 10.6, is 25.6 that would be the total height of the snowman so actually working wise very easy diagram very difficult there is a bit of trial and error sometimes with these questions is trying to figure out where you're going to make your right angle triangle and um, you might not always get it first time but keep trying and i'm sure you will find it so that's how we're looking to deal with this question okay 19 and that this is the last question so let's see Katie and Mona are looking up at a hot air balloon. K, M, and B, balloon respectively, and Katie and Mona. So Katie's there, Mona's there, the balloon's up there. They've measured the angles they're looking at. Um, so angle of elevation of the balloon from Katie is 52. Angle of elevation of the balloon from Mona is 34. Katie and Mona, okay, all that information is in the diagram. Calculate the height of the hot air balloon above the ground. Okay, so this is a trig question, definitely, and it's one of those calculate the vertical distance. So it's a two-step trig question. The first thing we're going to need to do, um, the first thing I'm going to do is find what the what the third missing angle. So do 180 minus your 52 minus your 34. And that gives you 94 degrees. So this angle here is 94 degrees. Okay. Now for trigonometry, um we're going to need at least we're going to need at least two sides. Okay. So for all of our rules we need at least two of the sides. So the first thing we're going to do is find one of these missing um, sides on this triangle. Um, it really doesn't matter if you find K to B or B to M. Um, it, it will work out pretty much the same. You'll just have a little different work, but you'll end up with the same final answer. So I'm going to do K to B. Um, there's no reason for that at all. It's just the one that's closer to me the way I'm sitting. So uh, from K to B, I'm going to call that my X value. So I'm going to start by finding that. Now, if I look at what I've got on this triangle, I have only one side. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and find, uh, I'm going to use the sine rule, which is the only one that works if you've got one side. So we've got a over sine b, a over sine a equals b over sine b equals c over sine c from the formula sheet. Um, so we're going to, I did a little bit of work over here. So we've got x over sine 34 equals 350 over sine 94. Okay, and that's how you work your uh, sine rule. So it's the a over sine a equals b over sine b. Now, we've got to try and figure out the value of x. I would normally just cross multiply, always at this stage. It's really up to you. There's obviously shorter ways of doing this, but x times sine 94 equals 350 times sine 34. And then we can divide by the sine 94. Okay, type that into the calculus, so 350 times sine 34, and then divide by sine 94, that gives us 196.2, we'll say 196.2 uh, meters. Okay, so this, this value here is now 196.2. What we're looking to do and what we're going to do is extract that height. Okay, so I am going to take off some of the information that we've got in the diagram, I'm going to rub this out. I'm going to rub this out because we now know that value. So that's 196.2 meters. And what we're actually looking for here is this vertical height here. Now, that is the key point in finding this side because now we have information about this triangle. It is a right angle triangle. So you can pop a right angle in there. There's two ways of doing this. You can use Sokatoa. You can a right angle triangle trig, or you can use one of your trig formulas again. I find most people prefer to just use a trig formula again rather than doing a different method, a different strategy, but it is entirely up to you what you prefer. You will end up with the same answer and an equivalent set of working. So if we look here again at this, just this left hand, okay, so I'm going to highlight it. It's just this left hand triangle, okay? H is our height. That's what we're looking for, this part here, this vertical line that I drew in. Now, in this triangle, we only have one side. So again, we're going to have to use the sine rule. So it's H over sine of the opposite angle, so h over sine 52 equals 196.2 over sine of 90. And it's just a, this exact same process again, cross multiply, so it's h times sine 90 equals 196.2 times sine 52. Of course, sine of 90 is one if you think about your trig graph um, for that function, so really what you've just got here is h, but we'll, we'll, we'll just deal with it the same way we have. So one thing is to take, divide both sides by sine 90, and we get that, and then we can just type it into the calculator. So 196.2 times sine 52, that gives us 154.607, blah, 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 blah. Well, you'll notice if you divide it by sine 90, it'll keep the answer exactly the same because sine of 90 is 1. If you divide by 1, it stays the same. Um, so our answer is 154.6 meters. And that's our five marks there. I think it was five marks for that question. Yes. And that was the 2019 higher, uh, higher mass, National 5 Mass Paper 2. I hope you find that useful. Um, if you did find it useful, please click that like button, give it a share, and remember, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Check out some of the other videos on the channel. See you later.